welcome to lecture 26 which is on visual interpretation method and this is the last lecture in for this particular topic. This is uh, uh, in this lecture you are going to learn that how the manual interpretation or visual interpretation techniques are useful in identifying the objects from the images or photographs. So, let us begin the lecture. When we carry out the interpretation and analysis of uh, remote sensing images, we have to identify the objects, we have to carry out certain measurements on that. So, in order to correctly identify the object with respect to their shape, size, texture, tone, orientation and also carry out some useful measurements, we carry out the visual interpretation. So, there are two different methods of interpretation of the images, uh, satellite images. Uh, one is the visual interpretation method where we are actually uh, using the our capabilities of the eye which are uh, sensitive in the visible part of the spectrum. We uh, can use aerial photographs also in the similar manner and carry out some kind of a interpretation extracting the useful information from the photograph. The second category here, the second method is digital interpretation method where we require uh, input as the digital data and we require the capabilities of the software. So, we will discuss digital interpretation method in another topic. So, here we are discussing the visual interpretation how the human eye uh, can identify the objects very accurately. This is uh, one of the economical method and particularly a developing countries like India where uh, we cannot procure and buy very sophisticated equipment and software and update them regularly. So, we find that still this is one of the economical method particularly if the area which is uh, to be covered is not very large for a smaller area. Normally, what we do is the images we are visualizing in the hard copy format. So, there is a paper print of the photographs, we are visualizing them. Sometimes we are doing the enlargement also of those images. So, at 1 is to 1 scale, the details sometimes are not very clear, then there are some enlarging method, there is a light table, there are enlarging equipment. With the help of that, we can enlarge the view and carry out the interpretation. Now, human vision system is the best basically when we look at a the photograph and try to extract the information um, with the help of the colors which are present with the help of the pattern, shape, size, etcetera, etcetera. Now, when we do that interpretation, we can carry out qualitative analysis also of the image. For example, uh, what kind of a land use is there? and uh, you know whether the water is polluted or looks pure water uh, when we are carrying out the analysis. We also carry out the resource uh, mapping and survey infrastructure mapping, drainage, uh, canal network. So, all these features also we can very easily identify with the help of the visual analysis. There are certain equipment, very simple equipment, simple devices are there which we are using in photo interpretation and we start from the photographs and satellite image, this could be black and white or area uh, or color photographs. Then we require a pocket and the mirror stereoscope which we have learned in our photogrammetry uh, because sometimes we have to see a 3D model, then we need parallax bar, uh, stereo plotter equipment then light table, magnifying table. So, these will magnify the details and sometimes the linear features because there is a confusion always when we are identifying the linear feature whether it is a road or it is a canal or it is a, a railway line. So, we can magnify uh, this these images and try to identify much more clearly. So, sometimes we use uh, magnifying lens in our hand and see that. Uh, on the photograph, uh, we require tracing paper so that we can trace out the detail. We need glass marking pencil, china pencil to mark certain objects on the photograph. Uh, we uh, normally we do not deal with a single photograph, we deal with a 
large number of images or photographs together. So, we have to create the mosaic when we are dealing with the large number of images because our area may not be covered with the single image. As you can see in the top here we have 6 images to cover the area and the bottom one is the mosaic which has been created from the 6 images. So, sometimes uh, prior to photo interpretation, prior to visual interpretation we have to create this mosaic and we carry out <coughs> the interpretation on the mosaic because with this is much much easier and we exactly know where our study area is. This is a um, mosaic which has been created from the Landsat uh, satellite images and it is covering a huge area as one image itself covers 185 kilometer by 185 kilometer. So, you can see here this particular mosaic which has been shown it is um, uh, it consists of 105 Landsat images. So, 105 Landsat images have been created and now we can mark our study area and carry out the interpretation from that. In order to carry out the interpretation, there are certain interpretation elements, visual interpretation elements and these elements are helping us uh, to identify the feature to carry out um, the, the qualitative analysis also. Um, these are tone, texture, pattern shape or form, size of the object, shadow and size or association. Now, although these are visual interpretation elements, but I would say that these elements are helping us um, in a big way when we are dealing with the digital image interpretation because identification of the object is also done there um, most of the time by the human eye. So, let us understand the importance of each and every elements and how they are contributing uh, to extract the information from the images. So, if we look at this pyramid, you know we have certain elements which are called primary elements like tone and color is the primary element. Without tone and color, we cannot see any um, details on the image, satellite image or photographs. Then there are certain secondary elements and under that is the size shape and texture. These three uh, elements come under the secondary, then there are some tertiary elements, the pattern, height and shadow these are and then lastly is the sight and association. So, they are in the order of importance. So, tone is uh, very, very important to us and as we go down to the base of the pyramid, these become slightly less important when we carry out the interpretation part. So, what is the meaning of these elements? Uh, uh, you can see pictorially in this uh, uh, presentation here the tone, uh, different shades what you see on the photograph, then a uh, texture. So, you can see uh, rough texture or a smooth texture of certain objects. So, pattern also, you know there is a distinct pattern of different objects or some uh, features on the ground when we take the images. Shape. Uh, different objects are available in different shapes, some are rectangular, some are circular, some are some uh, zigzag kind of a shape, then size. There are certain objects which are very big in size, there are certain objects which are smaller in size. We have to identify both, then association is the relationship of the object with respect to the surrounding. So, let us see them, study them one by one. Tone, how we define the tone? tone is a relative brightness of the uh, black and white in a black and white image we will talk about the gray shades. So, it refers to the hue, hue refers to the color which is available. So, this uh, tone is directly related to the amount of energy which is reflected from the objects. So, if the energy reflected is less the object would appear darker obviously, if the energy reflected is very high the object would appear to us bright on them. So, there are very large number of objects now on the earth surface when we take the images due to their reflectance pattern we will get the different tonal variation. Some objects will appear to be very bright and some will be very dark and some will have the medium kind of a tone. So, we will try to identify with respect to the tone 
what are the different objects. So, this image as example you can see that there are objects with the different tones and the shades. Now, human eye has a limitation here that we cannot identify more than 8 to 10 gray shades. So, if we take a black and white image we can find out 8 to 10, if we take color image we can find out slightly more, but if we take the digital image, that limit is endless, we can find out n number of shades digitally. The second uh, element is the texture here and it refers to the frequency of the tonal change. So, the tone are changing uh, from object to object and the frequency of the tonal change it defined the texture part of it. <coughs> now, this is often related to the roughness of the object or roughness of the terrain and some object may give us very coarse kind of a texture, some may give us fine, some may give us a smooth, some may give us a rough texture. So, take the example of the boulder, you get very rough texture if there are boulders in the river and you get the image. But the adjacent area which is a sandy area that will give you a kind of a fine. Similarly, the forest area will give you very rough kind of a texture, but this texture is a function of the scale. So, as um, you have a rough texture and you have a smaller and a smaller scale of that particular area, the rough texture may become a fine texture or the coarse texture depends upon the scale. So, uh, it is very much dependent on the scale, uh, we can actually identify the texture of the different objects. So, you can see here as an example, we have defined a smooth texture, fine texture and the coarse texture. So, crop, bare fields, water, you know they can, may have a smooth texture, uh, sand may have fine texture and the forest area, the lava flows, they have coarse texture. So, in this uh, image here, one can see uh, two, three kinds of the texture, very rough texture and a medium kind of a texture and a smooth texture. So, these very rough texture is produced by the forest cover in the area, but if I have a small scale image of the same area, then this rough texture will diminish. The third uh, element here very important is the pattern, certain objects you know they uh, specially arranged. Uh, in a way either naturally or they are the man made objects, but their special arrangement will give us some kind of a pattern and we can identify the objects with respect to that special arrangement. So, this is very very important characteristics to identify certain features on the ground. Uh, we for example, we know that there are different kind of a patterns, concentric pattern, radial pattern, checkboard pattern uh, by different objects. We find roads are making certain pattern in well defined cities, if we take the example of the Chandigarh sectorial planning. So, we get a rectangular kind of a pattern. If we look at some area in like Kanat place in Delhi or Rajiv Gandhi Chowk in Delhi, then we get the radial pattern. So, there are circular roads, outer ring road, inner ring road and then there are roads radiating in all the directions. So, similarly, you will find that agricultural land making the parallel pattern in the hilly region. So, if you take the image of the agriculture land in the hilly region, you will get some parallel kinds of a line. So, pattern is made. Uh, this uh, uh, image uh, on my right is showing uh, several road intersections are there at different levels. So, at different levels the roads have been built, but due to those curved shape intersection together, yeah, uh, it is making a certain pattern and looking at the pattern probably you can identify that this particular object is a road network. Now, uh, another example of the pattern is on the left hand side, um, there are patterns which are made by the roads in a well planned city. So, you will find streets and roads and are all um, rectangular in nature. Then there is a race course, race course is also making a certain kind of a, then drainage pattern is there on the 
right side image. So, there is a drainage pattern dendritic type of pattern is made over here, but you can see um, there are certain drains which are parallel also there is a parallel pattern as well present in the. So, looking at the pattern it is uh, sometimes very easy to differentiate the objects one from the other. The next parameter here is shape. Now, it refers to the shape refers to the outline or the configuration or the structure or the general form of the object. So, if I draw the outline of the object then looking at the outline sometimes uh, I can uh, identify the object looking at that shape of the outline. So, this is a very very useful characteristics uh, to identify many of the objects. We can identify with the shape of the object whether this is a built up area, whether it is a road or it is a railway line, it is agriculture or it is a water pond. So, all these can be identified when we look at the different shape. We can identify the stadium with the shape either it will be oval shape or maybe uh, some kind of a circular shape. So, uh, we can actually get the sharp edges uh, typically from the agricultural fields while natural features like a forest boundary or water features they are generally more irregular in shape. So, there are certain features uh, what we call as the man made features you know we, we have changed the characteristics on the ground. So, they are having the sharp edges well defined can identify them very clearly but natural features they may not have that sharp um, boundary, but they have some kind of a irregular shape which is present. So, this is an example of the shape here <coughs> cultural features cultural features we have geometric or distinct boundaries whereas, the natural features they have they may not have any regular shape irregular shape and the boundaries also. So, this shape also helping us to distinguish between the old versus new. For example, uh, a new township can be identified with the old uh, township okay, looking at the uh, you know shape and orientation of the. So, some tree species you know the athletic field. So, all that uh, you can identify when you are looking at the shape of the object. Now, if I see this uh, image on my right, so I can see I can identify pyramids in Egypt, Cairo. So, one pyramid, another pyramid by looking at the shape because it is so peculiar shape of these objects compared to the surrounding features that I can identify not only the shape, but I can pinpoint uh, the name of that particular object also. So, here uh, another example of the shape. So, you can see uh, a building which is the pentagon in the left side. So, this is uh, uh, a Washington DC pentagon building because the shape is pentagon and then you know um, there is um, uh, another uh, pentagon uh, in between and uh, this is divided into different sectors. Now, the other one is indicating you the oval kind of a shape. So, maybe you know this is a kind of a race course. So, looking at the shape one can try to locate even its position where it could be located and what kind of a feature is this. So, that is a very very important feature. Next one is the size and here this is size is basically um, whether the object is big, object is a small, object is medium. How we define it? Uh, it is uh, when we are talking of the image it is dependent on the scale. We have a small scale image, we have large scale image, we have the medium scale image. So, the object wall also would appear, the dimension would also appear. Uh, as per the scale uh, object which has a good size uh, dimensions. If I take a small scale image 1 is to 1 million or say 1 is to 
to 50,000 or 50,000, maybe it will appear to me as a dot. So, I cannot identify the correct size of that particular object. So, it is a relative term, we call this absolute term and this particular term uh, will depend upon the scale of the image which we are using. So, if you have a digital image, probably you can zoom it on the screen and see the object. Now, uh, when we are talking of the uh, width of the road for example, and uh, width of the road we can compare with the size of the cars. Right. So, likewise you know we can identify looking at the shape of the uh, size of the car, we can identify what could be the width of the road uh, because we know the size of the car. So, this is helping us in identifying the width of the road also. As uh, I mentioned that this is a relative term, so relative size is very very important clue as I given you the example. We can find out in an area, where are the apartments and where are the houses looking at the size. So, house normally will have slightly bigger size than the apartment area. Then single lane road versus the multi lane road. So, we can uh, identify the width, we know how much is the width of the single lane and if uh, there are multiple lanes, we can identify the width of that. This is the example uh, of the size. So, apartment versus house in this particular image and you can identify the single lane versus the multi lane. So, one can see that probably some of the places you know you have the houses and some of the places you have the apartment because of the size of that and similarly the multi lane and similarly the single lane can be identified with the help of such images size uh, can be identified you know magnifying. So, we are using magnifying lens, we are using some kind of a device which can magnify uh, the image give me the magnified projection. So, sometimes you know the confusion between the two object and the shape is there, we can magnify uh, the images and try to resolve that issue find out uh, what kind of object is actually present. Then next is the shadow. Now, shadow we know that taller objects will cast the shadow on the ground and it will depend upon the elevation of the sun. So, all the objects which have a certain height which have the third dimension will cast the shadow on the ground and normally this shadow will appear darker to me in black and white image. So, when I am talking of the um, that shadow part. So, this uh, shadow is obscuring the information on the ground. So, whatever is the information below that shadow, maybe it is very very difficult to identify by the human eye by visual interpretation. But on the other hand, it is helping us, helping us in the sense that looking at the shadow, we can identify what kind of a object could be there, whether it is a tower, whether there is a house and also we can identify sometimes the shape as well as the length of the. So, it is it is very very helpful in a way except that it is obscuring the information. So, very useful to distinguish the hilly area because in the hilly area we will have a pattern of shadow and sunlit parts, pattern of shadow and sunlit part. So, there are many objects now which will cast the shadow on the ground. Let us see the example here, there is a monument and a tower. So, this is the shadow part. So, very long shadow is there on the ground and sun angle is this side because it is casting the shadow onto the ground. So, now looking at the shadow, I can try to identify what is the shape first of all of this monument. The second could be that if I could measure the length of the shadow and I know the sun elevation, probably I can find out how much is the height of this particular structure. We have done that exercise in photogrammetry. So, this is a very very useful uh, exercise to determine the height of several structures uh, using the length of the shadow. 
um, you can see here that uh, building here on the left photograph and it is casting a shadow on the ground. So, now looking at the shadow I can say yeah, it looks like a rectangular object and uh, can identify the length also of that. The second structure which I am showing you on the right side also uh, one can see a big shadow because of the smaller sun angle very big shadow and the dome part is also very clearly shown in the shadow. So, shadow is showing me the shape of the building to a certain extent. So, I can try and locate the type of feature for which the shadow is present. Now, the, the uh, uh, disadvantage of shadow could be that probably uh, it is very, very difficult to identify some of the objects which are falling in the shadow region because that portion will be dark and the human eye is not able to differentiate those objects very, very clearly. Sight where that particular object is located sometimes you know that is also very important and we can correlate one object with the other object. So, sight and the next one is the association they are actually studied together in relation to each other. So, relationship of a feature to its surrounding environment is very, very important and many of the features have very good relationship with their surroundings. So, you can find for example, the swampy area you will find near the flood plain region. Snow cover you will find in the higher reaches. So, it is related to the elevation zones. So, there are many objects. Uh, if you uh, like to see the uh, forest area in the hilly region above a certain height. So, uh, all the features have some kind of uh, association with the surrounding. We can find out for example, the large building if it is there you know um, along uh, a converging railway line probably uh, we can say that this could be a railway station a large building which is just situated by the side of the converging railway lines. So, uh, we have located the railway line, but uh, the, uh, the station railway station could be located with respect to the railway line because of the association. Teak forest if we have to identify we can identify in the hill side. So, there is a relationship with some kind of a elevation in the teak forest. Now, you can see here in the left photograph left, left image we can see uh, the chimneys okay. and this is actually giving me some idea that probably there is a thermal plant here. So, I can actually with the help of the site I can locate the location of the thermal plant. Similarly, the other image on the right side I can see that uh, um, these two circular uh, these are the water treatment plants. So, I can locate the water treatment plant with the help of these two circular buildings. So, uh, location is very important association is very important which is the next parameter identifying one feature with the help of the other. So, there is a correlation and then we can identify because there are certain land use and land cover which are associated with the surrounding. Land use pattern uh, for example, is uh, land use pattern is associated with the uh, small scale farming will be different when the we are talking of the large scale farming. Example I have given you about the cooling tower or high tension lines or reactor vessels. So, that also can be located with respect to the surrounding features. Here is the example of those association if I have to uh, identify a dam. So, I can see the reservoir very big reservoir in my left photograph left image. So, there is a very big reservoir water reservoir and looking at the water reservoir because there should be a dam also there is a relationship there is association. So, I can very easily now locate the dam. So, when I do that if I further study the surrounding features and other feature maybe you know I can uh, find out its uh, tentative location also where that dam is situated what could be the 
name of that if I have some background knowledge of that area. So, similarly the other photograph which shows uh, the dockyard area one can see the boats and the ships also in that particular region. So, there is a uh, location or association between the two. Now, uh, we have the images with us satellite images or aerial photograph. Now, we have to carry out the interpretation of that uh, using the characteristics which I have just now explained you. So, I am showing you a quick bird image and this belongs to some area and uh, you know you can see the old township because of the uh, cluster of the buildings they are making a very haphazard kind of a pattern. Their buildings are available in different shape and different size because you are able to see because this is a high resolution image. So, uh, this is the old uh, city area and we like to identify the different kind of a features. We like to demarcate the open area, we want to find out the buildings, we want to identify the different roads and the streets. So, we can carry out the visual interpretation. We put up a piece of tracing paper and try to trace out all the details with the help of the seven elements which we have learned. This is another example of the quick bird image and in this image we can see um, buildings, road features, streets etcetera. So, we try to uh, identify the different buildings for example, from the quick bird data and also if we can identify from the available map. So, that we can just compare and see uh, how accurately we are able to use our knowledge of uh, basic photo interpretation element and identifying these particular buildings. So, the left one is from our own interpretation and right one is from the existing maps and uh, we can actually compare the two together and see where the uh, uh, where the buildings which are those buildings which uh, could not be identified and what could be the reason. Now, coming to the summary of that uh, visual interpretation we found that it is a very very simple method. It is economical because you do not require any sophisticated method you read just simple magnifying lens and uh, a tracing paper and a pencil to carry out the work. It uh, requires the help of the seven basic elements. So, all the elements may be present in your study area may not be present, but uh, you require uh, the help of these uh, interpretation elements in order to carry out the identification work of these and ultimately you end up preparing the thematic maps as I have shown you uh, in my previous slide uh, identification of the buildings from the images. So, this is all about the lecture. Thank you.